true believers this is jason burgos for suredog.com and with me tonight is a woman that is hoping the second time is the charm when it comes to snagging championship gold in november she fell short to felicia spencer in her first attempt to become the invicta fc featherweight champion with Spencer now in the UFC roster, she will again have a chance to earn the title at Invicta FC 36 on August 9th. And that two-time contender is Pam Sorensen. Pam, thank you for giving me some time tonight before your upcoming main event title fight in just a few days. All right. Oh, thank you for having me. Now, this is your second attempt at the Invicta Featherweight title, like I just mentioned. You know, after missing out against Spencer last year, title opportunities don't, you know, come around all the time. First... Are you feeling fortunate to, to get a second chance at, at the crown so quickly, which is unusual and, and very lucky in a way? And two, is there an added pressure to make this second chance count? You know, because it's, it's, it doesn't come around all the time. I mean, there is and there isn't. Um, I mean, I had a lot of stuff going on around the time in my last fight. A lot of stuff has happened since then. I mean, I had a major surgery and um, so this fight, it's, it's important in a different way. It's a, it's not just about winning the title. It's kind of like overcoming everything that I went through and um, still being able to fight after after everything. Can you talk about that that surgery that's kept you out? I mean, you haven't been able to fight since that Spencer fight, which has only been nine months. Are you able to to, to, to talk about that? What happened? What what kept you out of the cage for so long? Yeah. Um. So it was, I was experiencing um, some lower abdominal pain for, you know, on and off for well over a year. Um, ended up going to the emergency room thinking I had appendicitis. It was maybe a couple weeks after I fought Felicia and it turned out I had a really large ovarian cyst. Wow. So I think it was like four days after I went to the ER, I was having surgery to have it removed. Um and it turned out it was like three and a half pounds. Wow. So it, yeah. So it, it was big and they had to make a big incision like straight through um, the abdominals. So uh, it was not it was not a fun surgery, but I mean, it was necessary. Um, and yeah, this was I got offered a fight back in either May or June and I wasn't able to take it. I just wasn't ready yet. Mm. And then when I got the call um, asking about August, I was like, yeah, I think we're ready. Like, let's do it. So. When you originally found out what the, the real thing was, you needed surgery and the surgery and everything, what did the doctor say in terms of, like, was it expected to be a long recovery? Was it anything that would put your, your career in danger or anything like that? Um, well, I had, I had known a couple of other fighters who had had, not the same surgery, but similarly, had, they had abdominal surgery, and a couple of them had been told not to fight anymore. Wow. Um, Any reason why they, they were told that? Well, especially when they cut through your belly button, yeah. um, you know, there's cutting through a lot of ligaments, oh. cutting through all the muscle and the fascia, and um, I guess, especially when they cut through your belly button, there's um, an additional risk of, like, an incisional hernia, mm. which doesn't sound pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was very fortunate that the surgeon I had, she, she knew that it was important to me that I kept fighting. She knew how much it meant to me, and she, she did everything that she could to make sure that it was going to be a possibility and i know originally they were thinking you know six to eight weeks to start doing light training again yeah. and it might be a year year and a half to get back in the cage wow. and so so yeah i feel like i was very lucky like it was a rough recovery but i think others have had it worse and you said a year and a half i mean that's so you're well ahead of schedule i mean are, are, had the doctors already looked you over the okay wow this is fantastic you're on yep. schedule you're not pushing it at all yep no they they cleared me and they were I think they're happy with where I was, and she was like, all right, like, go for it. All right. Now, this will be also be your second straight headlining fight. Did being in the headlining role come as a, a big change for you the last time? Were there more media demands, like, for people like me? Was your rhythm uh, off a bit having to, to fight at the end of the night instead of early? Because I've talked to a lot of fighters that, you know, hate that and have to wait all the time. They like to get their fight out of the way. You know, did, did any of those things affect you the first time being in that main event role? Um, not really. I mean, I had experienced it, not in Invicta before, but I had experienced it, um, in the other promotion I had fought for, mm. uh, at least waiting till the end. So you see, you know, people come back, half of the people there are going to lose their fights. <laughs> they come back, that they're crying, maybe they're bleeding, mm -hmm. some of them are hurt. You know, I've kind of been there, done that before, but 
the additional um, kind of media stuff, it, it starts to add up after a while, mm-hmm. but also you get used to it. Do you feel better? So you, this time around, it's, it's not been a big deal. It's like old hat. I've, I've been here before. This is no different. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Let's talk about your, your opponent on August 9th, Caitlin Young, who I was told actually is a friend of yours. You know, she is a veteran as it, as it gets in this sport. You know, her 10-9-1 record may not impress, but she has fought a, a bunch of talented fighters during her career. Gina Carano, Julie Kedzie, Misha Tate, Leslie Smith, Liz, Liz Carmouche is about to fight for a championship coming up. Lauren Murphy, another UFC fighter. You know, she's been in the sport 12 years, but actually is the same age as you. So she's been in this sport a very, very long time. Because of her experience against high-level fighters, like I just mentioned, is do you view her as one of the very toughest tests of your career? Absolutely. I mean, I, I've i watched Caitlin since before I started fighting. I mean, she was, you know, when it was a possibility, and you Google, like, women's MMA fights, and her fights mm-hmm. popped up, but it was so cool. Um, she was from around here. She was a Minnesota mm-hmm. girl. She lived, like, 15 minutes away from me, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. There's girls. There's <laughs> right down the road who does this um so i've looked up to her for a long time um when she took a break from mma um she had a lot of muay thai fights and i was able to go to a, and even fight on the same card mm. as her a couple of times um but yeah her her record is very deceiving i mean some people would look at it and say well, why are you giving a girl who's mm-hmm. barely 50 a title yeah. shot but i mean it's been fighting for so long I mean, if you think about when she started, there really was no women's divisions. It was yeah. like, take the fights that are offered, whether they're good fights or bad fights, whether that you're ready for them. Like when she fought Gina Carano, I think she just wasn't ready because she was so early in her mm-hmm. career. Um, so her record's very deceiving. She's she's much better and a much more dangerous opponent than her record would imply. And you mentioned, you know, she's from the the area you're, you're from. You watched her, like, a, a lot of fighters, like, that came into the sport of your time, like, looking up to her and admiring her. Is there any weirdness in that, that you're fighting her? Do you, do you fear at all the possibility of getting in the cage? Like, oh, sh- wow, fighting Kate Leung. This is this is kind of weird. I was just, you know, I was looking. Is, is any fears of that? Or no, when you that cage door closes, she's in trouble. Yeah, um... It's kind of cool because I think it was, uh, who just thought? Max Holloway had actually said, like, train until you're kind of like your idols become your right, opponent. Right, right. That's kind of what he did. So it was kind of cool that somebody who I looked up to for so many years and, you know, never at the time when I was an amateur, even before I'd started fighting, I never would have thought that I'd be stepping in the cage mm. with her. And, you know, now I am. So it's it, not scary it's just scary. <laughs> i noticed an interesting <laughs> anomaly in, in that half of your professional fights have ended in split decisions you know, three wins two losses for you do you chalk something like that up to just the oddness of the sport it is it questionable judging in the sport on various levels and and because of uh, of something like that so many close calls do you was there ever time in your training that you you, you adjusted all on like oh i gotta push to be more of a finisher i'm having these close calls this is weird it's gonna put my career in trajectory in danger anything like that yeah um we've been working a lot lately on um you know fixing some stuff on the ground maybe looking for more finishes rather than just controlling because you know, you never you never know how the judges are going to go. I've been on, you know, the good side of, of a close split decision, mm-hmm. and I've been on the bad side of, like, a, you know, another one. So, uh, um, yeah, we're definitely making corrections um, to kind of go for the finish instead of trying to play it safe and trying to outpoint somebody. Are there anything... Is there any additions to your your training for this camp or anything unique, any training with anybody specific or anything special for Caitlin? Any, anything you're, you're bringing to the table for her, you know, wealth of experience or are you confident what you have now at what you're training at now should be enough to, to get it done on against her on August 9th? Um, I'm confident in the, the coaches and training partners I have. However, I have been lucky enough where um, Cowboy Cerrone's wrestling coach okay. – um, from around here and so he was back for the summer mm. and so he's been he's been working with me a lot on you know things specific for this fight both on the stand-up um and on the ground and against the, the cage um 
yeah, we have a few new tricks up our sleeves just for Caitlin. Interesting, interesting. What is there? Is there something about his his teaching style that's different, or is it just simply a different look? You know, different kind of of, of way of thinking on on wrestling that it brings something refreshing to the for this camp against her. It, he just has a very different style that I'm used hmm. to, and um, it's really he has a lot of quick fixes that are. It's just like. Oh man, this is so much easier. <laughs> it takes so much less energy, and it, it's so efficient. Yeah. Um, he's been doing it for so long, and at such um, coaching at such a high level that you know he coaches wrestling anywhere from kids up to you know um, people who are high level UFC mm-hmm. fighters. So like, he knows how to <laughs> explain. Like if I'm sitting there giving him the deer in the headlights, like, well, he, <laughs> he could explain something four or five different ways to like, all right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> is is it the type of thing where you're like, damn it, where the fuck was this guy three or four years ago? Is it that kind of like awakening in a way from a, a wrestling coaching? Yeah, and there were certain things. It's like as a as a white belt in jiu-jitsu, when you realize when you open somebody's guard, like, I don't have to walk right back in. <laughs> it's like, it, when you realize it, it's like, oh, like, that's <laughs> We've had a few of those moments. Right. Uh, for most, uh, a championship win in Evicta means a run in the UFC is likely coming. It, it's almost, you know, a rite of passage, it seems like, in certain, certain ways. Of course, most fighters on this side of the planet in the Western world dream of, you know, fighting the UFC one day. It's it's just something that's a part of things. It's part of being MMA in this side of the world. Is part of winning the featherweight title for you knowing this could guarantee a chance in the UFC? Or is that kind of more like icy? That's kind of a background thing. And it more for you, you are genuinely excited to add your your name to the record books as an Invicta featherweight champion. Yeah, I mean, I would I would love to fight in the UFC. I would love to um, hopefully one day get that call. Hopefully get that call after this mm-hmm. fight. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm happy with Invicta. I like the way that they they treated me and they treat their other fighters. Um, you know, if for whatever reason the UFC doesn't hasn't really pulled the trigger on building this division yet. Otherwise, Caitlin and I would probably be fighting in the UFC. Yeah. We wouldn't be fighting with Victor. So if, if they're not interested, they're not interested. So at this point, it's, it'd kind of be icing on the cake. Of course, I want it to happen, but I'm not going to beat myself up if it doesn't. Is there a part of you, because you just mentioned that Victor and Tresh treated you well and stuff like that, is there a part of you that, on a loyalty level, would like to at least maybe defend the title once or... If that call comes, and it, it seems when an Evicta featherweight champion happens, they, they get the call really quick. If that call comes, it, it, it's something you can't pass up on, even for one featherweight title defense in Evicta. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to – if if the call comes, I'm not going to turn it down. <laughs> but like that it, it would be nice to – I mean, poor Invicta has had a – Yeah. Crowned <laughs> a champion, champion, they crown one, and then they lose them. Um so, yeah, it would be kind of nice to see some people sticking around and defending their belts, so the featherweight belt included. But, I mean, Invicta is also very great about truly building up their athletes and letting them move when, when the call comes. What do you think about the the UFC's featherweight division? Because, you know, they it, it's a weird situation because it's a division that maybe doesn't have quite the depth of other ones like say featherweight i mean not featherweight uh, flyweight or bantamweight in the sport i mean still developing still come on but now you have cyborg she may be leaving she may be headed to you know another organization based on you know unhappiness with the ufc you know invicta keeps losing people felicia just left you may very well leave have to leave if you get the offer and you win a title is there is there part of you that coma instead of wishing it wasn't so split up that would you just like everybody to be Invicta and fight Invicta, or would you just like Invicta's old featherweight just to go to UFC and get it over with? Is there kind of a frustration that the the depth of this weight class kind of just keeps getting split by the UFC just picking every top Invicta fighter every time? Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, it is. And then um, also with the UFC dragging their feet, because um, Invicta's very good about letting their fighters mm-hmm. go. Bellator, however, is not. Mm. And Bellator picked up quite a few featherweight fighters and so when the UFC wants to say this isn't a very deep division well it is but you keep letting Bellator <laughs> snap them up um, Invicta you, you can you can pick people out of Invicta but Bellator is not so willing to let yeah, their fighters yeah, yeah. go so what do you think of the, um, the Bellator 
featherweight division? Do you feel it's it's on the level of the UFCs? I mean, Cyborg recently went public, you know, saying she felt that it was as strong as the UFC. Do you feel Bellator outside of Julia Budd has a good featherweight division on its own too? Um, yeah, they have some. They definitely have some talent there. Um, I forget people's names, mm. but uh, Olga Rubin, um, Cindy. I think she just had a one-off fight with them, but I know she wants to fight more mm. for them. Yeah, they have, they have some talent there, um, but I don't know. I like Invictus. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly biased. But. Speaking of, uh, you know, we were talking about Felicia. I don't know if you if you watched the fight with her and Cyborg. What, what did you think of her performance? I mean, you fought her. You you had a tough fight with her. You very well could fight her again. How do you think she looked against a legendary fighter like Cyborg that so many people revere as one of the best female fighters of all time? You know, she she's a lot tougher than people give her credit mm-hmm. for. <laughs> and I think she definitely went out there and proved mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah, I... I don't know. I thought she did really great. Um, it, when you looked at the odds, uh, it looked like people thought yeah. that Cyborg would end her. Yeah. And, and, uh, and she didn't. She stuck in there. She got her own shots in, and she's the first person to ever cut Cyborg. So, yeah. I don't know. I was really, I was happy for her. She did a great job. She might not have gotten the win, but, I mean, she definitely got made a lot of new fans. <laughs> I mean, speaking of that, you know, there, there's Meg, Megan Anderson, and, and we were talking in this, you know, idea of uh, fighters going from Invicta to the UFC all the time, and seeing someone like her do very well against one of the very best, does that give you, like, almost a, a feeling of, pride and almost like prestige that let's say you do win this title or you don't win either way you're it could be argued maybe that the the invicta featherweight division is the best considering that the ufc keeps taking from them they have these champions all these fighters that have been then going from invicta to the ufc seem to do very well and are the the heart of the division is, is that part of almost the enjoyment of this opportunity you are really getting a title that it has some legitimate serious prestige as one of the elites, maybe even more elite than the UFC's women's featherweight title. Because Cyborg is a former Evicta yeah. champion too. See, I mean, a lot of times they just bring 35ers up and, and call them featherweights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, whereas we actually have a division of people who are truly meant to be at 145. Now, I always like to end the, the, the interviews, you know, just learning a little bit more about the fighters, away from, from fighting. And so, so fans and people that watch it can learn a little bit more about them. So, so what's something that you're into that has nothing to do with fighting, that's a real personal passion of yours, that you really enjoy, that's really super fun, that, that some people would be really surprised? Like, uh, are you into, uh, you know, maybe a rollerblading or, or you may, maybe a uh, hockey? Or is, uh, what, what is something that really would surprise people? Like, what? Bam? Pam Bam is into that? I didn't expect that. Um, well, one thing that won't su- surprise people, I love my dogs. <laughs> I have three of them. Um, but mostly, most of my fans at least know that. Um, I also, I like to knit. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So I've gotten into knitting, and especially after surgery and stuff, I was knitting, like, you know, make like, hats or whatnot or blankets <laughs> is there do you and have it, a collection that uh, you can maybe show I, people is there like a wall adorned with your knitting work that you can that you have on display i don't hear <laughs> I, I back at but i have a closet full of full of hats and my dog has a, a kennel full of little blankets so, so should relatives of you already know like oh pam's gonna knit me a sweater this year you're looking forward to it has it gone to that level yet <laughs> yeah, no, they, they <laughs> Is there a favorite one that you, re- when you finish, you're like, damn, this is good. I, I want to keep it for myself, but you still gave it as a gift. Um, There's actually a baby hat that I made for my coach <laughs> last winter that I was playing with, um, like, different, like, trying to make little patterns and stuff. And I was like, oh, this one's really cute, but one, it's not going to fit my big old head. <laughs> it's made for 